Welcome to the office. Welcome to the office. Doctor. How can I help you? What brings you to the office? I'm experiencing three different places of uh, discomfort and pain in my back. Each one of them has a different kind of a timeline. What's number one? Uh, the thing that's bothering me the most and the reason um, here is um, there is this uh, kind of collective discomfort that connects from the top of my head, back of my head, on the left side, down my neck, my upper back between the shoulder blades, down my left arm, and then the front of my chest. Um, this Down your left arm to your to, hand? To my elbow. To my Just elbow. to the elbow? To the elbow. Okay. So like I told you yesterday, because I had this stroke five years ago in May 2017. Um, and do you remember the type of stroke it was? It was an ischemic uh, stroke in the left cerebellum, okay. which has now caused an affectation on my CN nerves. So right now, even though I can smile at you, uh, right now there's no feelings here. I, every day, I feel like a thousand ants are crawling on the right side of my face. On the right even side? Even though. Okay. Right now, it's just, it's just this buzzing. And that's I've, been going on since? 2017. Since 2017. 17, right. And did they find which nerve was responsible? No, I mean, they feel that out of the, I guess, the seven CN nerves, the one... Twelve that, cranial nerves. He's testing me. <laughs> Twelve. I guess cranial. one. Uh, but, you know, um, they were happy to... Uh, or initially, uh, the right side of my tongue was experiencing the, the classical, uh, kind of like the metallic taste, but that kind of faded away. Are, does your tongue deviate when you stick it out? Can I see you stick out your tongue? Can I have you keep your head straight? Point it, point your tongue out straight. Straight. Okay. Not too bad. Okay, good. So I think everything is, is seems to be okay, even though uh, recently I started to notice that I was pulling a lot to my left when I swim. Now let's get back to this though because you know when somebody hears this type of symptom they're thinking heart first, right? Correct. I experienced this when I woke up in the morning and okay. the pain is, is equivalent to weird, there's that really weird tensile feeling. It, I guess anecdotally kind of feels like a pinched nerve. Yes. It had this feeling so I, I figured I'll just push through the day and maybe it'll just go away just by kind of stretching and moving around the office. Okay. But it just wouldn't go away. So it was like this uh, compressive discomfort on the chest. It was in the upper back. I was trying to kind of like stretch myself this way. I was trying to do all these uh, movements, but it, it just wasn't going. So I go to the ER, they put me immediately on a gurney. They put a nitroglycerin in me, which of course kind of relieved the, uh, the symptoms. They, they did an EKG, okay. um, turned out okay. They did a CT scan, turned out okay, and then they discharged me after four hours oh, when all the readings didn't come, come through with, any near, uh, with anything strange. Next morning, I'm waking up, I have the same exact pain. Okay. So I went back to the ER again, um, and then they said, okay, maybe we'll do a high contrast CT. Uh, nothing came up. Uh, so that's kind of where we are. And then the other two uh, parallel pains, which I don't think is connected, well, I think it's not connected, okay. is, um, is a sharp pain on, on my right shoulder, but I think that came from me at the gym doing military presses with my personal trainer. And then the third element is from 2010 is this uh, incredible reoccurring pain on my lower back because I had this episode where they saw, I think, three slip discs. I had a back case of sciatica. I went for about two years of this uh, decompression therapy okay. with like mild electrical stimulus. No chiropractic? Um, they didn't put me on chiropractic back then. Okay. But I went, because my wife is a professional athlete, but she got me with her sports doctor, including basically the, the national soccer team doctor. So they gave me like passive exercises. They were, at one point, they were about to throw me to this doctor that, was, that wanted to uh, fuse a vertebra. I, I didn't want to do that. Mm. So I went through a couple of just exercises and, and that got me out of it after like a year and a half. But there was about like six months of where literally I was almost on a cane and kind of either crawling or yeah. Walking like like a zombie. Um, so why are you here? What am I going to do for you? You're you've, make seen sure, all, you've seen all the doctors. You know, you're going to make sure that none of this comes back up. You're going to like tell me how How'd I'm going to change. It? I'm gonna change. I got here uh, because my sister recommended you. She said when this was about a few. Well, she she came back for her uh, either last or ongoing session. I remember uh, a I remember. few year, a few yeah. months ago. When you yeah. mentioned it. Yeah, every time she comes here to see my uh, my mom, our mom, she tries to make it a point to see you. So yeah. she said you're a life changer, so. She never told me that. Oh, 
Well, she told her brother I, that. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you. Um, okay, so we have number one is what's going on here. Right. Number two is this right-sided shoulder. Right. And number three is the back. Right. Blood pressure, blood thinner, cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. three. Sugar's good. Sugar's okay. Uh, I've been I've been controlling my sugar. Okay. Activity levels. Activity levels. Three times at gym. Uh, weight training. One of them with a personal trainer. The rest is about forty minutes of walking around the neighborhood. I don't want any weight training right now for a few weeks. Okay. Okay. Let's figure out what's going on. Let's figure out the imbalance. Let's figure out if there's a nerve or nerve pressure causing this. And let's get we'll get started. Okay. Right, sounds good. And so you were saying, you know, the it, it's amazing when we look at the human body and. It's your body, right. and a lot of us don't understand how our body works. And one of the things that kind of blew me away, I was listening to uh, Steve Jobs, one of his speeches, and he was talking about when he uh, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He didn't know what, what the pancreas was. Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs mm -hmm. didn't know yeah. what the pancreas was. And that kind of blew me away, mm -hmm. you know. And when I started this and going on social media and getting all this information out, one of it was, I want to promote the work and the, the difference in Gonstead. But more importantly is help people understand their, their body and their body mechanics. Right. And that's one part of it, right? Well, the second part of it is, what about nutrition and lifestyle? Third part of it is mindset. So today we start on structure. Okay. Okay? We start on the hardware. We start on, we start on, the, on the hardware, exactly. And then we went to software lifestyle. Absolutely. First thing we want to look at is, and in this work, is do we have a level base and foundation? Mm. On the lateral x-ray, we're looking at a couple of things. Now, first thing we want to do is let's look at his overall posture. We're going to run a plumb line or a posture line from the L5 or the lowest lumbar. We're going to just run it up. And this line should bisect through the shoulder and the ear. So this line, if, if I'm doing it here, it should actually go through here. Mm. And what we see is that you carry your upper body slightly behind your foundation. Mm -hmm. Think of it. This is your foundation. Mm -hmm. This is the top of the building. This mm -hmm. goes behind. So what are these muscles and ligaments doing? They're working overtime. Mm -hmm. And so I know when you're sitting long periods of time, I know you're getting stuff across the top of your mm -hmm. shoulder and your neck. And part of the rehab is going to be working on your posture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now between both x-rays, this is also important, we have some curvature stuff going on here, that's fine. My business isn't here trying to straighten out a spine on this x-ray. Mm. My business is, do we have a level base and foundation, number one? Number two, do we have the right curvature and mm. is our posture right? Is, two. That, is that like at an angle? Yeah, that's a kink in your upper back. Holy cow, and that's a severe kink. Yeah. And we're going to explain what that area controls. That's the, that's the area that controls your heart and lungs. And I'm going to explain it. Wow. So before we do that, let's go, let's look at this. We have these two charts here. We have the spinal nerve chart. And the spinal nerve chart is showing all the peripheral nerves that come out of the spine that power all the, shoulder, all the joints and muscles in the body. Okay? So when we're looking at shoulders, we're looking at nerves starting in the neck. We're looking at sciatica. Sciatica is a symptom that can come from anywhere in the sciatic nerve, which forms from this area of the spine. However, I've had more than, at this point, more than 60, 70 cases of sciatica coming from an upper cervical. So anything can really cause anything. Now, this is what's more important to me, dude. This is the autonomic nervous system, right? What's the autonomic nervous system? It's the nervous system that controls all our internal functioning. It's happening regardless of what we do, right? Now, we have two parts of the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system. We have the sympathetics and the parasympathetics. Sympathetic nervous system is in the middle of the spine here. Parasympathetic, at least in the Gonstead work, is C5 and above, and sacrum down low. Okay. Sympathetic, speed up. Parasympathetic, slow down. When we're looking at this area of the spine, T1 through T4 controls the heart and lung. Sympathetic control. We have the vagus nerve that comes out, cranial nerve that comes out of the atlas. And that cranial nerve goes down and it innervates everything in the head parasympathetically all the way down to the transverse colon. Sacral plexus, ta sacral plexus takes over from the transverse colon down. Okay. Now, the heart. The heart is what? Syncytial cells. So you can take heart cells. 
You can put it in a Petri dish. And they, they beat. But they beat sporadically. They're doing 110, 120, 130 beats per, per minute. Now, the control of that is sympathetic, T1 through T4. Guys look in Guyton's medical physiology to learn the neurology of it. And then we have parasympathetic control, slowing things down. Okay? So we look at both. In your case, I don't know till we examine, but I want you to understand the way I look at things. I'm looking at it from the neurology, using the spine to affect the nervous system. When we look at the foundation, what do we see? Do we have a level base and foundation, just looking at it normally? Uh, we're a little bit off. Not so bad, but a little bit. The thing I want you to notice is we have the whitening on the sides of the sacrum here at the top. This is called enumeration. This is calcification or thickening of the bone. And thickening of the bone is due to Wolf's Law. Bone will grow according to demand placed on it. So those things are rubbing. We're not getting full motion through your SI joints. And we'll see that in your walk when you walk. Let's go to the numbers and see what the numbers are telling us. We have two things going on here, three things going on here. Number one, we have a rotated sacrum on the left side that's dropped four. That tells me we had some sort of old tailbone injury whenever it was way back when. Okay? We have an AS5EX1. It did, it, the system is labeled both sides. We're going to figure out on you which side we're going to work on. But I'm going to talk right now about the left side. So the left SI joint, the left pelvis goes AS, up 5 millimeters, slightly out. The sacrum on the left side goes back 2, and it goes down. That's the disconnect in the foundation that created the compensation in your spine. We have a slightly shorter leg on the left side, 2 millimeters. 2 is the MD, the measured difference. If I work on your pelvis, I will make it worse. So the answer is not the pelvis. The answer is in the sacrum. If we need to deal with the pelvis, we deal with it later. Here's the interesting part. Let's say we did work on the pelvis and then it made the two millimeter went down to four. But that four came from where? The drop sacrum. So we're probably going to be starting somewhere in your sacrum, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Okay? We do have a lot of digestion stuff going on we need to talk about. And if we look, the first thing I look for is the Megan Blasi, which is the gastric air bubble. It should be a dark black half circle here. I don't even see it. Just what little. is it? This is just gas and this is all undigested food in your gut. Really? Yeah, really. So this is the ascending colon, transverse descending. By the time it's getting to the descending, it's still not fully digesting. Digested. So you're not absorbing and assimilating your nutrients as well as you could. Huh. Slightly short leg, but the sacrum drops on the left. It creates this slight curvature on the left side. What's the body doing? Compensating, coming back to neutral. This is all based on what's called the writing reflex. The writing reflex is we are biped predators, have our eyes in the front. Writing reflex states the body will do everything and anything to maintain the head straight and eyes level. Mm -hmm. That's where these compensations come from. Mm -hmm. Okay, otherwise where would the body be, the head be? The head would be way over here. So now we come over here, and then we have this kink right there. Wow. Now the kink, the thing about the kink for me is this. This is the area that controls the heart and lung, T1 mm -hmm. through T4. That's one part of it. The second part is up here. Now, if this kink is here, that means these ligaments are shorter. The muscles shorten. They elongate here. So I know you, you're tight up there. Okay? And if we're trying to work out and do shoulder presses, you're working with an imbalance. You do have a jaw deviation. I do. So, yeah, you can see it goes to the right. But it could be a little misleading because of the kink in the neck. We'll check it. I can work on it if it's there, if we see it on the exam. Okay? Just things that I see on the film. Now, when we get to the top here, so you see it goes like this, it compensates again. Is that normal? That's not normal. No. <laughs> no, it's no. not. It's not. Dude. It is not normal. It's not, dude. So this kink, and then you can see C2 is kinked like this, so your C1 doesn't have a level foundation. So mechanically this is off, and this is where that vagus nerve comes out of, okay? Is it starting to make a little bit of sense? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now here's the interesting part. We are designed to have level parallel discs, okay? First thing we need to look at is the foundation. Let's go down, and there's your tailbone injury, I see. You had a nice tailbone injury here, okay? whenever that was or whatever it was. It's an old injury. And you can see the, the body formed this callus. 
but that injury or that tailbone injury caused the drop on that left side. And that's what we've got to see if we can fix to get that side up. Now, as a result, you can see your L5. L5 is a little thin. And what it's doing in the back, it's creating an osteophyte or a spur. And the spur is usually formed because there's instability. Well, the way I'm looking at it, I'm working on your foundation, so five has a good place to sit. Spurs form the way I see it when there's instability. If we create stability, I've seen it in 70-year-olds disappear. Oh, yeah? No joke. But the point I'm making here is we have sacral instability, L5 was unstable, and this is, it's just trying to hold you in place. We'll probably deal with that after the sacrum if we need to. As we go up the spine, we can see compensations and, and what's the body doing? It's just trying to stabilize. Here you can see it's starting to form here. All of this is because of the instability or mechanics. Now, the neck discs aren't bad, uh, but from that kink you can see, we should be seeing them like this through. We should be seeing through the disc parallel, even if they're tilted. Here, down at two, three, four, five, six, it's kinked. And then same thing is happening here. It's trying to form an osteophyte. It's trying to stabilize that area. We're going to look at the flexion extension and see what's going on here. The second thing is we need to look at that upper cervical on flexion extension and see if that space moves. If that space doesn't open up, then we know there's some sort of fixation happening also in the upper cervical. Okay, this is extension. In extension, it closes. That's fine. But look what happened in flexion. It didn't open up. I'm pretty sure we have something upper cervically related to all this stuff that's going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the basement, we got the penthouse, and we got some stuff in between up here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay. Shall we get started? Yes. Let's do it. So what you'll notice when he walks, he kind of just swings that left leg. Keep walking. I'm just, mm -hmm. I want you guys to look here. So he kind of does this. This is your walk. It's kind of like this. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's like this. This thing is all stuck. It's not moving. So you're swinging your whole body when you walk. Keep walking. Have you always walked with your toes out like that? Mm. Have you always walked yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. So the thing I talk about with that is bilateral toe out, usually something in the upper cervical. We just had a case. A guy came in from Seattle. We did his, we're going to share his story. And uh, through working on his neck and his back is one of the, his feet are starting to straighten out oh, really? box, and he's had it for 20 years so i don't know if that's going to happen with you but i'm just throwing it out there okay keep going is it comfortable to walk when you walk now it is but after after 54 years so walking. Okay. <laughs> keep going no but this you know people used to joke that they could recognize me walking from a far distance because of the silhouette of the walk. Okay, well, guess what's going to happen. Let's see if we can change that. Okay. Starting at the base of the neck. And we're off the charts, 25 points, 30 points. So this, I'm running a meter. This is uh, thermography. We're checking for the imbalances of, of the spine. Mm -hmm. It's measuring temperature or heat. When there's inflammation at the joint, uh, it's measuring the difference, and this should be zero. So when you go back to watch my videos, my job is to make sure everything is clear. Oh. Right? Think of this as your 24-port switch, right? The computer is sending the mm -hmm. signals down the switch, exiting out the different ports. So this ain't gigabit. This is like, I don't know, what is it? The brain communicates with every single cell in the body a hundred times a millisecond. Mm -hmm. So you can do the math. What does that work out to, guys? Someone do the math. 25 points, left side, C1, oxy. Now, as we run the meter down the spine, what I want you guys to see is he has cord pressure. I'm going to explain this. So the needle is sticking the whole way down, and then it goes to the opposite side on the right. And that is classic cord atlas or upper cervical cord pressure in the Gonstead work. I want to just explain this on the upper cervical mechanism for you. And the reason why is I'm going to have to deal with this first, have you walk around, and then recheck the rest of you. 
I want you to, this is the upper cervical, this is occiput atlas C2, C3. I want you to place your fingers inside. And what I want you to notice is if we have any twisting or turning of the upper cervical, what is it doing to your fingers? Mm, it's compressing. And your fingers represent the spinal cord. If we take cross-section of the spinal cord, there are different parts, anterior and posterior, that affect cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacrum. So we can have cord pressure even affecting the low back. Okay, next thing I want to check just for myself, this is for me. I just want to check your pulses, okay? So pulse number one, it's a little fast, the heart. Pulse number two, lungs. Pulse number three, digestion. So between the three, the digestion pulse is very low, okay? Heart is, is, is good, it's strong, but it's, it's a little bit mm. off. Maybe you're nervous, I don't know. Breathing, take a deep breath in. Breathing pulse is good. Digestion. Mm. Okay, let's figure out this upper cervical and continue. This is C7, C7, C6, C5. You gotta mess up your hair a little bit, dude. Four, three, two. Right there. Turn left, turn right. Look up, turn left. This is isolating the lower cervical spine. Look down, turn left. This is the upper. Okay. Now I just gotta do a test. I want you to follow my fingers all the way, look at me, stare at me for about 10 seconds. Any lightheaded or dizziness? Okay. Other side. Look at me over here, please. Look up a little. Anything, any lightheaded or dizziness? No. Okay. I'm just, it's a modified George's test just to make sure there's no arterial issues going on. Just measuring the lateral masses of the atlas to get the listing. ASLP. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and set C1 for you, okay? Okay. You ready? Sure. ASL. Now, if we look at it, i got to come up a little because the angle of C2 is slightly elevated on that left side. ASLP. I need to turn the head. There. And that's the home run, baby. Nice. Okay. Okay then. Hmm. Walk it up. Check it out. Let's walk it out. Man. Walk it out. Keep going. Not lightheaded or dizzy right now. No. no. Sorry. Good. Walk one more time, please. Now have a seat and let's check the rest of the spine. So we had C1 classic cord pressure. And let's see what we got now. Hmm. Now we just got heat. And it starts to go away. There you go. I have a suspicion I'll be working on that low back sacrum. There it is. So do you see now it was breaking on the right from the cord pressure. Now the cord pressure is clear and now we can see where is it? It's on the left side down at S3, S4. Okay, feet together. Let's check the hips. Open and close your knees with your feet touching. Open and close. Yep, open and close. Good. Right side only. We're checking. Uh -huh. We're checking general SI joint motion when he does the. Keep going. When he does the right, you see this whole left side shifting. Do the left side only. When he does the left, the right is fine. Scoot back for me, please. Okay. Now let's feel what's going on here. This is number five. Come back slowly. Tender. Not too bad. S1, S2, that's what I'm getting, right there, S3. To the left, 
to the right. S3, left side. You ready? Let's go do this. Sure. Let's go on the high-low table, the gray table. So we said it's slightly dropped on that left side, so we're going to torque clockwise to bring the left sacrum up. It's going to be this way, this way, this way. Relax the shoulders, sir. Good. Gotcha. And that's the home run, baby. Nice. Thanks, Shasha. Mm -hmm. Oh. Like butter. Walking. A little different. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Anything different for you that you feel in your in your walk right now? I feel less like the cover look. Your feet are straightening out, dude. Keep going. Nice. You're not swinging your legs as much. Go one more time, please, and let's rescope. That's why sis sent you here. I guess so. Have a seat, sir. He's even sitting a little different now. We've got a little heat. of the spine. All clear. All clear. Let's feel the sacrum. Let's feel the difference. Come back slowly in extension. Come back. That's five. That's one. That's two. This is the one I adjusted. Different? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Scoot forward a tiny bit. Let's check the movement of the hips and see what happened to that left SI joint. Uh, open and close your knees. Open and close. Yes, sir. Let's do the left side only. Okay, right is good. Do the right side only. It's a little bit less. Good. Awesome. That's where we're going to start. I'm going to set your right shoulder. Let me do the work. Drop it down. There you go. Hmm. Set the left shoulder, AI shoulder. There you go. So tell me about this. Let's open and let's open and close the jaw. Look at me. Uh, and close. Open. Uh, close. Let's check the TMJ. Slowly open. Right side. I'm going to just guide that right TMJ in a little bit for you, okay? You're going to open all the way, open all the way, slowly close, and I'm going to, hold on, so open, slowly close. There you go. Slowly open, and close. Voila. That's where we're going to start, sir. Thank you. Questions and anything I found, explained, or did? No. Things are good. Pretty straightforward. Things are good. We Thank did you. The, we did the sacrum, S3. We did the atlas. We did the right TMJ. We worked sacrum. on your parasympathetic nervous system. We started to slow things down a bit in terms of we're fight or flight. We're setting up the leaning tower of pizza straight. Exactly. Got Stand it. up for me, please. Squeeze the hand. Hand is good. Squeeze the hand. Let's work on this elbow and the lid. That's it. Squeeze the hand. Welcome to the office. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you.